थैंक यू थैंक यू thanks uh, dear shadil marsh it's been excellent excellent talk a very interesting talk and uh, that too a very very complex uh, subject and uh, deployment if it doesn't happen you can imagine what happens to the entire mission the satellite <laughs> of course uh, uh, this uh, uh, talk by mr murali has been a very absorbing one and uh, my very some of my students i am sorry they could not come and listen because of the uh, sslc and uh, plus 2 exams they have missed it a great deal but yet despite that we have got something like 70 plus uh, uh, participants here so uh, so it it's a very happy day for me because i am seeing too many of my very good friends and colleagues of isro here of course we are seeing only online but yet it is something an exciting see i see anil mathur for our time dr shivaraman pappan pj but nikhil mugand of course he is not from isro but he has become a part of our family here uh, <coughs> then um, dr rangnath pk sundaramurthy mahadevan vi mahadevan uh, joshi dr jeraman my very good friend and neighbor in isro layout uh, cn nagrani and vishnanath and pj but of course all these uh, veterans from isro have come it's a very it's a blessed day for uh, me in that way also and uh, uh, i would request uh, uh, dr jeraman uh, just to say a few words about this topic in fact while in isro i used to go to this mechanism group often whenever i am in isro satellites and i used to go often there and enjoy uh, the way the deployment happens on the ground for their testing so that uh, uh, memory of that of that is there you know my 15 20 years back uh, memory uh, is uh, playing very uh, nicely on me <coughs> so i request uh, uh, begin with dr jeram to say something about today's talk dr jeram vijay are you able to hear me now uh, yes, yeah sir. yeah we can we can we can Okay. First of all, I should congratulate uh, Murali Sir. So I see, okay, see, he joined in 1999, probably ISRO. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. And I, by the time I had left ISAC, ISAC I left in 1989. Okay. Ten years later, I joined. So that I still remember those initial days of troublesome days with mechanisms. Yes, sir. You can remember Apple. Apple no deployment. <laughs> one of the panel did not deploy. Yes. In that one series, had to own share of problems. And when we ISRO started its own deployment mechanisms, I still remember Emman Satyanarayana, Nagesh Rao, yes. and Yen Vishwanath, and all that. That team, and they started counting each one of those successes. And as part of the mission management in IRS systems, I used to participate in almost every one of those deployment testing and all that. It gives very pleasant, fast memories. What all happened in the last 25-30 years, and now the Brody and others. Are holding that and very complex system they are able to deploy. As Sajid Kumar put it, it's the birth of a satellite, and it's a, without mechanism, nothing works there. Okay, of course things are beginning more complex. People talk about big optical structures like the Hubble telescope, the James Webber telescope, etc. But the primary mirror, secondary mirror has been deployed. It's at alignment accuracies, you know, going to micro rads sort of angles. And as we held throughout the mission life against the gravity variations, etc. So I think the challenges are many, many more, and I'm sure that ISRO will meet all of them. Because of course, I also should congratulate all the students who listened to this very excellent talk. It is not just a software writing a programming, which is engineering. 
every one of those things what Murali talked about today in aspect mechanical, thermal, electrical, electronics, electromechanical, optic, everything is part of the system here. And it is a very complex system because spacecraft is a, a complicated system. To understand every component and ensure that it works throughout the mission is a big challenge. And I think we should congratulate again Murali and his team and the students who are listening to this. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your kind words. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Morley, as well as my seniors. See, first thing now, uh, uh, we started our uh, our own mechanism in the insert two year onwards. Till today, uh, we have a success record of hundred percent. I think we have to congratulate the uh, mechanism team for this great uh, effort which we have seen. In fact, in insert as uh, uh, our gentlemen sir told, Apple we had a problem. We could not uh, deploy the north panel and then we had a problem of uh, power generation. But still, we managed with the uh, half of the power availability and then we successfully run the mission because we have already worked out our uh, contingency mission plan and then we have done it. But in INSAT 1 uh, series also, we had seen few problems of that panels not fully deployed and some uh, some of the spacecraft it has not latched fully, uh, but uh, from inside two series until today, what we have seen uh, in terms of deployments wise, every deployment went flawlessly and it has done its job. Okay, uh, but for some uh, with that uh, our only in the sail uh, uh, sail. There was some kind of uh, undulations, of course, the, uh, those things, uh, okay, uh, but now with our uh, ingenuity of uh, configuring, now we have totally removed the sail and uh, boom uh, deployments and then we are able to make all those things. I think the mechanism plays a very important role and we as a mission person, we interact with them very closely and then try to work out the sequence for the deployments. That is very important. If you see our INSAT 2 series, the panel deployment time for the south panel to north panel. Always we see there is an increase in time in the north panel, sonar panel deployment. That is mainly because of the temperature differential. Because we used to be there in the transfer orbit with the only north of the south side facing the sun. Whereas north always used to be in the uh, uh, dark side. That is, it is sitting on the cold side. But what happened, this we overcome by changing our uh, deployment plans. That is, we rotated the solar array and then kept the north array we have, in fact, practically, if you can say in the colloquial language, we have roasted the north side as well as the north in to bring the temperature up. See, this is how we did all these things. Of course, all these things are all again for our successful uh, launch of our mechanism and other things. But one thing which now I should be thankful to Murali, he has put down all the things uh, in a simple terms, that is, which can be easily understandable by the students and what it involves because that is more important because what I know is not important. How I tell others to understand what it is, that is more important that Murli has done it very well. Thanks for the opportunity given. All the very best for your further endeavors, Murli sir. Thank you. We have, thank, you. We have, uh, thank you, Sundaramurthy. We have several veterans here. I would like to listen, but then there will be depriving the students their opportunity to uh, ask the question. But yet, you know, I find uh, Dr. Nagrani is he still there. I would like because I have not uh, uh, heard him talking. Uh, Dr. Nagrani, are you available? Sit. 
okay uh, we, we we may not have time for everybody but then uh, pj but has been there uh, from the beginning from the very very beginning papan all, all of them and uh, i request pj but make uh, uh, relevant comment please thank you sir first of all really thank you so much for the excellent presentation uh, i just want to highlight some three points only this mechanism group I said, this is one domain in satellite technology which is like more nearer characteristic wise rocket science because they deal with some things which are uh, to be done one shot and if it, that doesn't happen mission is a failure and I remember the way late MNS sir, MNS Satyarana sir and others put together people from various various areas and resources and built this group. And the way the achievements have happened in this group, either we have heard it already. Second point which I want to highlight is thanks to UL Space Club for organizing this talk today, which happens to be anniversary of launch day, launch of Inside 3A. And you know, morally highlighted Inside 3A. I took the example of Inside 3A. I would say Inside 3A is a mechanism-centric mission. It was a mechanism centric. I remember the the time spent after the launch in Hassan mechanism team was a darling of the whole or everybody because it was a mechanism centric mission and on such a day it was launched in fact on 10th April 2003 and today this talk being organized is very apt. Third thing I want to highlight is one statement which Varun made in the beginning. He told now that we have talked of basics and all that we are moving on to more technical aspects. I liked that statement. In fact, this is a good beginning. With this, I am sure your place club will get resource persons for various aspects of satellites and rockets and this would continue. Thank you so much. And once again, Murali, thank you so much for enlightening me for many things which I didn't know about mechanisms I came to know today. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, but sir. Thank you, but sir. I, I understand that Nagrani is there. Would you kindly say a few words? Some comment, yes. please, Agrata Nagrani. Yes, uh, I have already written in uh, message that this was an excellent presentation and very lucidly it is presented, particularly of a very complex topic. And uh, I think all the students would have understood it very well. I, for myself, was reminded of how complex the deployment of the sail is. I think even if whatever we might have done, but the sail deployment and the antenna deployment, this I understood are the most complex deployment mechanism. So sail deployment started with even one two A, or even earlier than that in one series also sail was there. And I have seen both deployment in the high bay. That is what I was reminded. High bay, how the deployment is done, and the and the water plot, how the, that deployment is done, and it is an excellent way of looking at it. That was an excellent mechanism. Of course, now we don't need it because our satellites. We are now we have separate satellites, both for math satellite and communication satellite. They are separate, so we do not have big satellites. So on one side, when there is an imbalance due to radiation, we can compensate by other means, and that is what we are doing. But that mechanism still was marvelous and I saw that presentation by Murli and uh, particularly the deployment, it was excellent. The way he has presented, the way he has explained, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nagrani. So nice. I would like to, we, we all would like to listen a few more, but uh, <laughs> we'll be standing between the students and their questions uh, and Murli. So, uh, Shadir Marsh, should we proceed? Well, please, please, please. Hi, please say uh, a few uh, comment, please, Dr. Nigil. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, hi, Murli sir. It, it has been a fascinating talk. I personally learned a lot about spacecraft mechanisms and especially all those unfolding schemes. And I was curious, like when you go from this uh, process of like starting it from the engineering board engineering design to the modeling and then to prototyping testing. I was curious how much time do you typically spend on each of these phases? And, uh, and that was one thing I wanted to know. And as you said, it's like a very risky procedure because there is no 
once you deploy it it's like uh, you cannot go and fix it like we do in our labs so uh, special kudos uh, like to you all to your team and i wish you all the success and i hope students have learned a lot i'm sure they have learned a lot and i am sure they would be they would like to know more i mean like in future talks from you so all the best yeah thank you thank you uh, one of the question was that how much time does we take uh, in realizing this thing so basically uh, many of these things uh, it depends on the concept so if the concept is available we quickly realize them the concept models and then subsequently go with the prototype and then the engineering model so all these things typically takes around one one and a half year time frame but there are examples wherein we have even made an entire uh, mechanism within few months maybe three months or four months kind of depending, depending on the requirements so we have realized uh, as i told the uh, the radial rib antenna which we have shown the last videos so the last on orbit video so three of them uh, the flight models we have realized is within a span of one year so that was a very challenging task which was given to our team and we could realize it in a very short span and it was a national requirement so we could uh, Uh, raised to the occasion and we could uh, develop it so it is development to the realization time was somewhere around 15 20 months kind of thing so that was a big pre model so on orbit yeah Uh, yes sir thank you sir thank you for inviting me uh, my friend nandana is here with the question uh, collected questions for the question and session but uh, just before moving to the question and session could you uh, just tell me to uh, announce one more thing and uh, i would like to announce our uh, next program under our sky safari community of ul space club ul space club i have a astronomy group named sky safari it's for uh, those who have keen interest in astronomy and sky watch uh, so our next session uh, we were conducting sessions from january a uh, uh, monthly program uh, and surendran punashiri sir so our program of april month will be uh, done at uh, 17th of april and uh, it will start at uh, 6:30 pm of 17th of april and all of you are invited to the program uh, other uh, details and our poster uh, registration links will be shared through ul space club platforms all of you once again welcome to the uh, invited to that program uh, sky safari uh, sky watch sessions and uh, let me uh, move on to the question and session uh, nandana please hi everyone now we are uh, moving into the next session the most exciting session of this google meet so um, good afternoon sir the first question is how many layers of insulation is required to survive reentry in harsh environment of space it's asked by saket yeah uh, saket actually it's a good question um basically even though i have not worked in this uh, area uh, directly um what what we try to use is basically uh, for reentry type of missions there are certain stock uh, certain type of a complex carbon carbon tails are being used so basically these are specifically designed which can absorb very very uh, uh, high temperatures so something like even 200 250 degree kind of uh, things so i am not really uh, competent right now to answer your question like what is the type of layers but I, what i understand is there are certain sort of a carbon composite elements that are used which erode actually so as the reentry happens this erosion occurs and the layers gets eroded and then finally it protects the um uh, instruments of the astronomers which are, who are there inside so this is what i can i can answer thank you sir the next question is by adul sachin what is the mechanism of sending a space telescope into space okay so the mechanism uh, basically depends on the size so basically let us see for example the uh, there are several telescope which has been flown uh, till now and uh, we have done one in astrosat and uh, there are uh, certain telescopes which are developed elsewhere particularly in the science fraternity like the james webb space telescope and uh, there is also one uh, 
which is very very recently being developed that is called as the um, I, i don't know but uh, it is being developed by the northrop grumman uh, company for the nasa development so these are uh, depends on the size so basically if you typically take the size of a uh, space telescope uh, it can be as uh, as big as the maybe some one one point five meter kind of things so typically these type of uh, telescopes they are like single solid uh, uh, mirrors so the mirror like a newton newtonian or a galileo type of a telescope so they have a mirror in that and the mirror needs to be protected from any sort of a direct solar radiation kind of things so there will be a, a cover mechanism which is on top of that so basically the cover tries to protect this kind of a uh, radiation that uh, is uh, radiations or the atomic oxygen erosion so all, all those things so the once the uh, telescope reaches the space uh, orbit the covers are open now so basically they try to uh, protect the uh, uh, telescope so that is how this type of uh, mechanisms are used basically the other way is the one of the largest reflector that has uh, telescope that is being developed uh, uh, in the northrop grumman company in uh, i don't remember the name but there is a very big uh, telescope something around 6 meters in diameter or more than that so there, there are a lot of uh, mechanisms that are uh, involved in that it's a host of mechanisms the entire uh, satellite is uh, the, the, the telescope is like a sail like a ship you can think like a ship once it opens up with lot of mechanisms that mirror itself is split into some four five different segments and once it goes to orbit the mirrors are positioned the, the mechanisms are used to deploy the mirrors and then position to the required accuracies uh, so that it is optical accuracy so it's very very stringent accuracies and at the same time it also needs to take care of the thermal uh, uh effects so there are some thermal blankets which are put beneath that which can protect the telescope and this happens at the lagrangian four point so there are it is a very very cold environment so these are different type of mechanisms that are used typically you know, telescopes use cover mechanisms so that's what i would like to say here thank you sir the next question is by dakshin this large satellites and cube set have same mechanism uh not uh, exactly but the concepts they are same uh, however large mechan- large satellites depending on the type of uh, mechanisms we need to have uh, uh, spring energies or motorized deployments kind of things but uh, when we go for a nano satellite the the, the array size or i will take an example of a solar array so they are very very small solar arrays which uh, which mass is also very very less so you can use a very simple hinge mechanism and you can do a ground deployment test without any uh, zero g systems or zero g support systems all those kind of things so it becomes very simple for us and the second thing is the holding that small uh, solar array also is very very simple because the weight is very small the la- the loads that comes due to the launch vibrations are less so we use a very simple uh, thermal uh, life kind of a thing very like a uh, heater cuts a rope and then that uh, panel gets uh, opened out whereas in the large uh, solar arrays the size of solar array is bigger so you need to hold it with uh, a lot of uh, energy and uh, you need larger uh, systems and higher loading systems on those things are required but the concept wise i would like to say both are both of them are almost typically the same thank you sir the next question is by manjunath sir why satellites are covered with gold sheet or gold foil but not any other color and what is the use of covering the satellite okay it's a very interesting question actually you have observed these pictures or the real images of satellites very well i appreciate that so one of the important uh, thing is that the gold shape is not it's not a gold actually so basically there is something called as aluminized kepton so basically aluminum uh, foils are typically sort of a uh, sort of a aluminum is like silvery shape and the kepton shape is something like orange in color which is semi transparent so together when they are put one above the other you get the gold uh, shape actually gold color so basically so these are typically used for thermal control so basically they are like blankets which are put on to the satellite so these blankets they try to ensure that the satellite uh, or the object which is kept inside doesn't see a sharp thermal shock it is like you try to wear a uh, wear a sweater and try to get into a uh, cold chamber or something like an air conditioning chamber 
immediately you will not feel the uh, temperature difference but over a period of time even the sweater also gives up and you feel the cold or the hot basically so there is a, the thermal shock whatever it comes so that can be protected to some extent using this kind of uh, blankets which is called as thermal blankets and the color is basically to the combination of aluminum aluminum and capron so that's the gold color that comes it is not the gold that we are using uh, there for those uh, satellite blankets thank you sir the next question is by saket how much pressure is exerted on the craft on re entry or on take off so again uh, i think i am not competent to answer this uh, question uh, because uh, i am not really sure what is the type of pressures that uh, it encounters but typically uh, for an any air uh, any craft space craft where it's man mission we need to protect this uh, inside internally by maybe a few bars within few bars it has to be maintained but i am not really uh, confident about answering this question okay sir we are cut shorting the question answer se session due to the time constraint so the last question is by atul sachin sir can you briefly explain what was the type of mechanism used in the landing of perseverance in mars okay on uh, the perseverance uh, mission in the mars they used a typically uh, for landing the rover they have used something called as a sky crane kind of a system so wherein uh, the rover gets attached to the sky crane and it is lowered from the sky crane platform using a rope and then the uh, rover gets landed uh, i think a detailed video of this is available uh, in the youtube and uh, basically it's like a crane it's entirely a new concept wherein earlier also they have uh, used this kind of a concept so slowly it gets uh, lowered and it gets landed onto the mars that's what i learned about that thank you sir now i invite master varun to announce the quiz thank you nandana before, uh, before uh, varun before we continue further uh, just like to take the opportunity to invite uh, my guru actually uh, cn vishwanatha who has joined uh, just now so thank you very much sir for joining uh, for today's lecture hello mr vishwanath uh, so now so we welcome you for this program vishwanath uh, i i uh, i see I, i used to see you very often in you know in our isro layout uh, and uh, when murali told me that uh, uh whether he can you can he can invite somebody i said you most welcome most welcome when i heard your name and all that most welcome please come sir uh, thank you sir thank you i joined earlier murli not now only switched on okay. the <laughs> you are you are there from the beginning i have been watching you i have i have yeah. there are one dozen names i have put here your name is in that i read yeah. out from there only so people thank you thank you <laughs> okay so Murli was my boy, so I am very happy he has given an elaborate, detailed lecture on the mechanisms. At the same time, I cannot um, forget my guru who brought in that uh, discipline and the culture of building these mechanisms so perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Please continue with the session, sir. Thank you. Uh, that that is you are referring to MNS, yes. isn't it? MNS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, very good, very good. Thank you. Ah, uh, your 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 mic is mic is mic mic. Please put the mic on, Papan. Can, uh, can you hear okay, me now? Good. Uh. I'm really you may not know me because can you hear me? Yes, sir. I am able to hear you. Yeah, Murali, uh, you may not know me because I left this row in 1995. Okay. I have witnessed witnessed the birth and growth of your group. Okay. Uh, you know, when in some when uh, Apple failed, we all cried because it became a paralyzed child. We put it on orbit very successfully, but one of its panels did not deploy, and it became a paralyzed child. Paralyzed child, but it obeyed us for three and a half years. And one night, two o'clock, we were watching it, and she did not 
receive our commands and we declared her death in the orbit. Then came the next step by Professor Rao and the Department of Space to create a new group called Mechanism Group, which, as Vishwanathan said, was brought up very, very was a disciplined way by Yemen Satya Narayana. And I should say that you must record your success in the Guinness Book of Records as the only group in the world which have made more than 300 deployments in space without a single failure. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, I used to tell Yemenis that you, he must, but he used to say, Papa, that's not important. Another thing he taught me was the principle of test, test, and test. That was the success of all mission software, I tell you. We never used to tell, keep anything untested. That I learned from Yaman Satyanarayana. I used to learn that he very rarely used to go to his lab, lab but he used to hear if one boat has fallen in the lab, he used to listen to that. That was the sharpness and discipline he built into your group and the, the success is because of that. And one thing he explained to me is the launch or the boom deployment, which is 16 to 18 meters. I mean, 18 meters will be 70 feet long in space. There are almost one lack of mechanical hinges which work in unison to deploy a one feet or two feet packed material to about 20 meters, let's say 80 feet away. All of them have to work. If one of the hinges reverted heat to no, does not work, the satellite is lost. That was the precision accuracy, design, with, and testing, which has gone into this. And I'm sure, Murali, you're uh, explaining to the student uh, generation uh, very nicely the mechanisms from its concept to the employ deploy, I mean, uh, realization. I it's a very good talk, and you are doing an excellent job. Let it continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, I think I already uh, gave my views already. I think let us let us move on. I, I think already is there told me and I talked already earlier. So. Chelsea. Okay, sir. Uh, just one, that, uh, just just one moment, uh, Varun. Uh, you know yes, uh, our uh, next uh, program, next webinar. Uh, monthly webinar every second Saturday is on May 8th. That is a Saturday. And uh, Mr. Subramaniam uh, from Flight, uh, Flight Dynamics, uh, he will be talking on mostly on orbits. He's yet to give the topic. Uh, in fact, he was supposed to be there today, but I think he has not been able to come. He told me. If he is able to come, he will come and listen to his talk. So he is going to talk next uh, webinar that is on May 8th. So we will let you know the topic, but uh, most probably on orbits. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, just um, before declaring the cues, uh, thank you, Melissa. Thank you. It was a uh, wonderful session. I enjoyed a lot. And like Nigel sir said, uh, we le uh, learned uh, something new, and we are eagerly waiting to learn more and more from you. And uh, that was a uh, wonderful session for me, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for that. And uh, usually we conduct uh, a cues related to the webinar topic uh, on each session of our webinar series. Today also we have a QS, UL Space Club Q session 35 uh, through Google Forms. I will just uh, share the Google Form link in the uh, chat window. And you can uh, access this link only after uh, the end of this webinar. Uh, so please uh, use this link to access the QS and uh, try to participate and uh, do a better uh, job. 
do a well uh, well job in uh, the queues and uh, one more thing i want to say is uh, our winners of uh, last we, uh, month queues will be declared uh, through our ul space club platforms uh, all our groups and our social media platforms uh, so please check our social media platforms and our groups uh, for the winners uh, details uh, so that's all uh, shall sir out you Hello. Uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, my name is uh, Navneet. I'm a member of your space club. So when we consider the the webinars, the webinars that we conduct, the US space club conducted since May. Uh, well, we had sometimes uh, certain webinars on general science and sometimes on space related, more space related sciences. And when we consider the space related sciences, we had uh, or talks on various topics like sometimes on specific missions like the moon mission or sometimes the Mars mission and uh, sometimes we had sessions on topics like um, uh, certain applications of the satellites like telecommunication, mm -hmm. remote sensing and GPS and many more. So when coming to today's session we had a bit different as well as more fundamental uh, talk actually in, to in today's session we were able to understand the various mechanisms that is behind uh, the working of a satellite and how a satellite is being built and actually Melissa actually gave us a really good really, really good picture of how much hard work is being put into building a space probe and how much time it consumes and how much hard work it is so I thank uh, sir for that and also Today's session was a uh, really informative as well as intriguing. So it has aroused uh, the cu curious minds of several students, including myself. So thank you, Marilisa, for being with us uh, here today and uh, sharing your experience as well as the information that you presented to the slides. Thank you, thank you. So thank you, sir, for that. Also, uh, I would like to express the thanks uh, on behalf of the US Space Club to all the people, eminent scientists like Kutisa, Patmanaman, uh, sir. PJ Bhatsa, Nigil Sa, Sundara Muthi Sa, Shivaraman Sa, and all others. Uh, well, your presence has been a real blessing, uh, blessing to all of us throughout the webinar. And also, I would like to thank each and every one of these participants. So thank you all. Uh, have a nice day. Oh, what of thanks over and uh, everybody is happy that we had an excellent talk. 
and uh, we thank murali for being with us such a long time he spoke uh, for more than an hour uh, itself and then uh, um, posed for the questions and uh, gave very nice answers this is very nice i have nothing more to add i am very very happy i'd say again to meet many of my friends in addition to my dear students thank you have a nice day thank you sir thank you very much thank you bye thank you all bye thank you sir uh, the quiz link is open now so uh, uh, all students can uh, attend the quiz i uh, using the link given in the chat window it's open now yeah. okay thank you i think i think most of the people have left i think <coughs> yes sir today we are a bit delayed not not that way but uh, you know it uh, both the talk as well as the question and answer took uh, good enough time that is very nice yes sir and uh, we had around uh, 70 participants today uh, that was uh, uh, really unexpected uh, at this time at the examination time that is right at the yes, examination sir. time that is true that is true but uh, more than a dozen uh, veterans came you know not students yes sir more than a dozen veterans yes, came today. yes sir that's what i said in the beginning of the webinar it was like a blessing there was one there was an anil mathur ac mathur he is the man who is conducting the program you know in ahmedabad see on 12th there is a program This yes sir yes sir uh, he uh, just uh, mentioned uh, in the in the chat window also he have you uh, and yeah, his mail i saw that i saw that i saw that i wanted to invite him but then you know time is not uh, uh, it will get so much delayed that is why i didn't do that anyway nikhil spoke that is very good yes sir and shivaram sir who who are shivaram shivaram sir he was present i saw him is present i saw yes sir and he has shared the registration link and the uh, pdf uh, in the webinar family uh, for the 12th program oh is it good 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 okay so thank you dandana thank you very much dandana you did a good job welcome sir oh, so nice so nice navneet well done Oh, good, good, good. Because I, I find you people are doing for the uh, first time kind of thing, you know. Not, not very often. That is very nice. So, okay, Shadil Mas, anything more? Varun, so bye. Nothing, sir. Nothing. Okay, yes, bye. sir. Bye, bye. So, bye, Varun, sir. you do one thing. That seventeenth program. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nori, seventeenth uh, program of uh, Skywatch. and uh, 23rd program may ah okay work sir out. Sure. work out eh oh, talk sir. to your uh, friends and see what uh, needs to be done and check with uh, shajil mash uh, and others and see what 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 should be the program we should be presenting okay thank you okay sir sure sir thank you thank you bye sir uh, one more thing sir ah uh, for you uh, sir i got a mail id of uh, dr tarno patmanaben sir Uh, with me uh, so uh, uh, could you please contact him on behalf of your space club he is uh, you forget what was his uh, background uh, so he is from iuk and uh, he is working with uh, jayendra oh. in our oh, 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 oh. okay 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 uh, you you have his uh, phone number No sir, I just got his official mail ID from uh, uh, his LinkedIn and a few other uh, website of Ayuka. Oh, I, 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 okay, okay. Let me see. I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Okay, sir. Okay.